And I had the time of my life And I never felt this way before About my five cats And it's true And it's false Okay, that's that's something. I really know how to ruin a joke, don't I? Yeah, just yeah. stomp on it. Yes, just, just beat it to the ground. Just American history X that joke. Oh God, we're not going to talk about curb <laughs> stomps on this curb episode. Stomping. And you're recording. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so next week's episode is only about curb stomps. True. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, bring me in on that. The, the, uh, to yes, the, the top matter. ten curb stomps in <laughs> movie history. All right, Ian, you're welcome back next week. The the, cur- the best yeah, curb yeah. stomps in cinematic history. <laughs> yes, I, I love it. I, do you think of any outside of American History X? <laughs> nope. It's just that one. We're just talking about that one for ten times. I feel like that's not that's not something to celebrate. I'm going to Google that right now. Top ten curve stumps. Top ten curve stumps in history. Well, we do it. <laughs> Make sure you share that link. Yep. Like it in the comments below. Smash that like button like you smash him on the curb. Oh, oh my god. Lies. Jeez. I like this guy. Well, the, <laughs> the uh, American History X Men. Oh my god! Why have we not seen that movie? A film. A f- what? It's a, a film parodying the curb stomp of American History X and parodying X Men. Oh my God! Put it it's in the link. I want to see it. Wanna see it. A, it's a short drama. What? How do I watch this? Where can I see this? We're watching this right now. How long is it? I don't know. I don't know. I just looked it up. It's got to be on the YouTube, right? Did you just go to the YouTube? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's 69. I'm 69. Yeah. I don't know. The YouTube. Johnny, how do I make a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with this record button, son? <laughs> oh, that's just the worst. All right, let's just do this. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I am your host, Johnny Blackburn, and alongside me this week, as <laughs> always, is Gary Elmore and Neil Riley. And we're welcoming back our favorite guest of all time, Mr. Ian Webb. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Ian, yeah, you're, you're, my, you're my second favorite podcast to be a guest oh. on. Oh, we, what? we put it out there. Okay, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm in first. I'm in first. Okay. No. I, I was like, I thought, I mean, you just called us your, your side chick, uh, yeah. essentially. I'm you said you were on another sure guest starring on another podcast. Two days ago, you just said this like five minutes ago. So no, tell me, what you're making yes. this up right now? Oh, get, get the fuck out I of here! I haven't yes, recorded. So tell tell right, us what, what is. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll get up. Good show, guys. Good show. And cut. So what? What's so great about this other podcast? Why are you doing a show with them and not solely with us and your own podcast? I don't understand. Well, I'll tell you. What did we do to because, uh, yeah. the guy who created? <laughs> Like my co-host and my podcast, for those listening, I, I come from movies so bad they're good. Uh, the guy who who mostly runs that and edits it, Seth, mm-hmm. it's it, the other one is his other podcast. And if it wasn't for that one, I wouldn't have a podcast that's at all. A, that's a good reason. Okay, that's we a good reason. Demand your fidelity. <laughs> yeah, I actually got so y'all. You guys should actually for uh, for listeners of this uh, for our diehard fans. Uh, I actually got to guest. I actually got to guest star on an episode of Ian's podcast, "Movies So Bad They're Good." Uh, yesterday, and we reviewed the movie uh, "Dead Alive." Oh, oh, uh, Peter Jackson. Is that thriller. the movie that had the most blood use of any movie in Hollywood? It did. Oh, I remember that. It, yes. <laughs> yeah, remember? T- yeah, yeah. You knew that on your own. I knew yeah. that all. Man, I myself. feel like we talked about that earlier. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you're just yeah. a knowledgeable dude. <laughs> I'm just a happy yeah, it, guy. It's just kind of funny how it worked out because uh, last time, <laughs> last time y'all had me on here, uh, I brought that movie up, and it just happened to be yeah. the next movie that we were reviewing. So you know, why, why not, you know, bring them together? It, it honestly, it, I mean, the movie from an entertainment value it was pretty it was pretty damn entertaining i'm not gonna lie like i mean you get to yeah. see uh they're punching zombie babies through okay. windows <laughs> and you get to see a woman uh some zombie like takes his fist and just punches it through the back of her head and it comes out her mouth and that's how she dies oh and that's pretty interesting there's also a, a kung, alert i know and there's a kung fu fighting ninja a ninja for jesus wow no, yeah, priest. Right? Yeah, kung, kung, fu kung fu fighting priest, priest. Yeah. Yeah. ian i have a question for you sir what's that have you ever seen the the trilogy Human Centipede. I've seen the second one. 
Okay. Okay, that's that's a oh, good one. one. That's a good one to yeah, see. The that's, second one it is ruined my week. It, like, <laughs> all right, last, last time I was I was on here, and I I told you all about the movie Found. If I had right. seen the movie Found, right. I would have I would have said Human Centipede too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, yeah, that's a pretty disturbing movie, just in general. It, it, yeah. it is, especially the 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 portion where he's. Please pleasuring himself with the sandpaper. That it's, or when, like, oh the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just that whole movie and like it's just shot in black the, and where white. Where the woman gives birth in, in the car the, when she's trying to get away from the serial killer. Yeah. So I mean, like it's yeah. yeah. Oh, what's our topic today? Oh Johnny? wow. Well, speaking of, we're oddly enough we're not doing movies so horrible they'll make you puke. No. We're gonna uh, <laughs> today we're gonna be discussing uh, the biggest flops uh, or. Movie flops yes. uh, in cinematic history. Uh, so to start out today, uh, I just kind of wanted to get open the floor for discussion. What do you guys think makes a flop? What are the problems with these films? A lot of times, so let's set the stage. A lot of times these movies, they have a really large budget. They typically have some some form of star powered normally. Um, there's Or there's some big name director attached to it or it's based off a really popular book or TV series or video game or something like that. So how can these movies fail? Yeah. What, what happens to them? And we're defining flop here as a movie that fails to recoup the cost of the movie. Right. Doesn't make it a... Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make it necessarily a, yeah, it doesn't that's talk a shitty about, film. Yeah, it doesn't talk about the quality of the film at all. Right. Just, I mean, that's lost like, much. Pluto Nash is a <laughs> yeah, great Yeah, I was, I was wondering about that, actually, because... Um, yeah, you were asking that, so I was uh, I was wondering, is this the definition of a flop? Okay, I got you. So no. you're asking why it flopped. Correct, exactly. Yeah. Why do these big budget movies flop? You know, is I mean, what 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 do you get? What do you guys think? Just from just from past experience, I mean, we've probably all seen a fair amount of flops in our day. There's there's a ton across the last century of film. So. Well, for a good amount of them, it, not the very big ones, but uh, a lot of movies, unfortunately, are not advertised well. They just, they come and they go and nobody's ever heard of them before. Some of them, yeah. Some of them, yeah. You just see, like, the trailer. Uh, I guess for a lot of these movies, you know, uh, they, w- they were flops before YouTube even became big, you know, or, po- or you know, Spotify or Pandora and stuff. So the advertising was done on television for the most part. Um, yeah, and I, I, I'd have to agree with that. I'd say that a lot of trailers are missed, um, you know, whether it's it's the planning and the timing of when they show the trailers, you know, like what, what time slot are you showing? Are you doing, are you throwing all your money into ABC and Fox and, you know, pushing your your preview out on their commercial ads mm. during like a seven to 10 o'clock split on a Tuesday night or something mm. when not a lot of people are going to be watching TV, you know, or midday or on the weekend at 2 PM or something like that. Right. You know, so th- that's, that's a good one. Um, I think another big one is you have a lot of, and we've talked about this with this, not with the studio system still in general today with executives, uh, getting into the mix and you know we've talked before about how especially executive producers and the top executives at the movie th- the uh, excuse me movie production companies they'll take the script that was originally there and they'll muddle it up with all of these changes that they think are going to be really popular because there's a formula in Hollywood that is always successful and they're like oh well this movie doesn't have enough of romance or it it's it's too violent or you know oh there's no really zany antagonist and mm. it's a kids movie so that's called for or something like that yeah. um so i think that's another big one yeah and another one's probably just the actual time you choose to release the movie oh, it's a um one. so like uh and some of that is uh the studio's own stupidity like if you release a movie when another major major film is being released like if Star Wars is coming out that weekend, don't release your movie that weekend. Yeah. Maybe, um, maybe don't. Maybe cats shouldn't yeah. come out at the all. same exact. Yeah. Well, first off, at all, yeah, yeah. but the at same all. exact weekend yeah. that that the the latest Star Wars movie came out in December. Like, I, I know what their plan was there. Uh, when I, the articles I read on that, that's funny you bring it up. Was the fact that they I'm a very funny guy. Thank you. You are a funny guy. Thank you. Yeah. You're a clown. You, you're you call me, me a clown? Am I here to amuse I, I am, you? Yeah, I'm calling you a clown. That's from uh, The Godfather, which is a great movie. From Goodfellas, Gary. <laughs> oh, oh, it was yeah. kind of a flop. It's kind of a flop. That, that was Goodfellas? A big flop. Yeah. All of you yeah. can, can you go know, to it, hell. It didn't okay? even win uh, Best Picture. I think that was Dancing with Wolves that year. I didn't even say anything. All right, Ian, you can stay. Neil and Gary can go to hell. Okay. okay. Oh, oh. 
All right, <laughs> Ian, you're my new co-host. These yeah. guys can go away. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's either released at a you know a bad like any movie that was going to come out in you know March or April or May of uh, 2020 right. was probably not uh, a great thing. No, there's now granted they they pick the release dates typically you know a long six time to advance, nine months yeah. if not more uh, if not further in advance usually. So you know predicting something like mm. a COVID nineteen quarantine yeah. is not. But I'm just saying there's like but, you know like. Uh, it used to be like every year uh, around Christmas, the Harry Potter movies would come out. So that's true. Um, probably not a great time to release your movie if you want true. to and that, do that, well. That was the problem, you know. I mean, with so and and back to cats, they were thinking in their mind. Uh, the executives, the studio executives for that one, were thinking, oh well, you know, we're going to go ahead and cater to the market of of women furries. and young oh, yeah, girls yeah. that don't what furries <laughs> and, and furries, yeah. yes, that that's aren't a big, big Star Wars fans. Okay, well. It, one of the most, if not the most, successful franchise in the history of cinema. It there's tons of women I know that love Star Wars, right. and even if the women don't necessarily love Star Wars, most likely their significant other does. Right. And so they're gonna go see the movie either way. Mm -hmm. So I mean that was just a it was just a theory that failed miserably. Yeah. And I mean yeah. first off the the movie itself shouldn't have been made in general. But yes. I digress. Uh, yes, I, you do. I, yes, I, yes, you do. <laughs> but, uh, let's see, some other things that are, you know, uh, a problem is, uh, you know, the script for movies can just be so awful that, um, especially nowadays when there's so much instant feedback on how people think of movies, like you have Rotten Tomatoes, uh, that can immediately not only give you the critics' average aggregate, uh, which may or may not be uh, influenced by how much... Uh, Goodies the company has given the critics to 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 write about that, but it's also it also contains an aggregate of the just actual people that go see the movie, the audience, and so if you see that there's a you know Pluto Nash has a four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, um, you know you're probably not going to go see that because oh. that's a, a that's a splat. We're totally Nobody likes to see a splat. Later. So okay, so where are you where are you reading that? Where where did you where are you reading that the 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 executives of these studios are sending gifts and money and like paying off these critics essentially. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. I mean, you... common sense. I mean, huh. you know, common sense. They want to be invited to movie premieres. You know, they get money. Oh, okay. I so mean, that, like that's, if you, that's if, speculation. If, if man, somebody that's... reviews a Disney movie bad, do you think that Disney's going to ever ask them to go to a premiere or anything a screening? I, no. I, I I feel like that's. I mean. <laughs> I'm not going to fully disagree with you because mm. I do think that probably happens. Absolutely. Um, but, I, I mean, there's... I highly doubt you're ever going to see a critic come out and admit that and be like, oh, no, of course you know, not. I, I, gave a, I, gave, I gave, you know, 100% and, you know, five out of five stars to, to Cats right. because the studio sent me, you know... Twenty thousand dollars. If I if I right. would do that, and so yeah, no one's I mean, gonna no one's gonna you know re, you know they're not gonna have their integrity questioned, <laughs> you know, outright like that. But no, I mean, yeah, you're you're right. I I can see, I can see it happening. There's shady stuff at the top man. in Hollywood. No shady stuff. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How do they pick you. the best picture? Oh yeah, they just bribed the whole committee. Okay, that's good. Yeah. You think yeah. they bribed the whole committee? Yeah. They definitely much. didn't bribe Warren Beatty or La La Land didn't bribe him enough. Well, I mean, I don't think he like picks it. I think he just he did. He just read from an envelope, yeah. I, which was not Warren Beatty's fault, by the way. No, I it wasn't like Warren Beatty's fault. Out. It's whoever gave him the envelope. Although and we, that's so sad because Warren Beatty's last thing he'll ever do in Hollywood that he'll ever be remembered for is screwing that up. The biggest award of the year, yeah. And just announcing it. And people are gonna be like, "Who's this old guy that's screwing up this award?" And like nobody's gonna know all all of his body of work. You know, you know what I you know what I wonder? Who do you guys think? gets fired for that because some I, is it the stage manager is it the producer of the show is it the showrunner who gets fired for is it the person who's in charge of writing the name down and handing the envelope like who gets fired for that because somebody well, had well, fired everybody yeah, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. everybody. Just the entire Oscars are just wiped out. Uh, maybe actually, <laughs> we're going with the new crew next year. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Um, okay, so we so we uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look really quick. We had uh, we so we asked the entire panel to kind of just just breeze through their own memory and go on Google and you know check out uh, a bunch of different films that they thought might be some of the worst flops of all time. So the first uh, subtopic we're gonna get into is uh, let's go ahead and take just from our own knowledge uh, movies that 
we may have even liked at some point um, that we actually just thought was a flop. Because you hear stuff, you know, you hear about, um, the one I hear about the most is uh, Waterworld. I hear about Waterworld just yeah. having this huge budget uh, to build the set pieces. Go ahead, Ian. That's definitely the elephant in the room right there. Yeah. Um, you know, so that would be, that would, for me, that, w- that would be my biggest one. And actually, when I was looking on the biggest flops of all time, the monies that had lost the most, mm-hmm. or excuse me, the movies that had lost the most money, uh, I actually didn't see Waterworld on there. Now, I know that it, it, it did end up losing a bunch. And um, it recouped it from the, like, uh, VHS. Yeah, from, and, like, yeah. the syndication yeah. on showing and, on TV yeah. as and a movie. VHS yeah. was a type of media platform common in the mid to late okay. 90s. Yeah. yeah. Um, in which people <laughs> watch movies, by the okay. way. What what was funny is at least when you when you go on to Google and you, you research it and stuff I don't know because I you guys heard the Waterworld thing right I'm yeah, not the only person yeah that. it was very expensive to make okay so from what I've researched the budget was actually 175 million and at the box office Damn. over time they actually recouped more than their initial investment 264 million so right. I'm not sure if that was after the well movie. You, you have to also consider that when they say budgets for a movie they're not including the marketing which is typically two to three times the budget of the movie True. so yeah, if you point. spend 175 million on the movie then you're probably going to spend another 300 and uh, 50 almost. million on uh, right. marketing so yeah. you know. um and, and i mean with with that too you know I, I i've heard a lot of people rag on Waterworld for a long time. They're like, oh, you know, Kevin Costner, he's done such great stuff. Like Dances with Wolves. Like Dances you know, with Wolves, or the JFK, Academy Award winning movie. Or, uh, you know, just, a, a, you know, a number of other great films of his. Um, 13 Days. <laughs> Look at this. This is your report card. But I actually like that movie, though. It's it's one of those. It's, in fact, that would actually have been a movie that we probably could have added into the podcast from the other week that we all did. Uh, movies that terrified you to your core. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it talks about yeah, how- global warming coming in and just flooding the entire world and this post apocalyptic, well, water world. Um, but God, you know, I just I can't not love a movie with um, uh, the guy that was the how am I forgetting uh, Dennis, Hopper. Dennis Hopper? Thank you, Dennis Hopper. Yeah, I can't. Oh, I mean, yeah. Co- oh, Koopa, yeah. he, Koopa and Mario best. Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the these the, the bomber and speed. Like he's <laughs> always he's always entertaining as fuck to watch. Easy Rider. Uh, and Easy Rider, yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. Waterworld would be mine. Um, Neil, how about you? I mean, just off the top of my head, a movie that I saw that I knew was going to be a flop going into it, but I was already invested after the first uh, Evan Almighty when they tried to just carry yes. over the success of Evan Almighty. Uh, I liked Evan Ooh. Almighty. Don't get me wrong. I really? I did. I really? thought it was so stupid. It was great. Gosh. Dude, I, I hate it so much. So stupid. <laughs> I love Steve Carell, man. I thought it was. I, I was, was so funny. bad when I was watching it. <laughs> oh God. Um, so yeah, no, that. I mean, hell, man, that's a good one. Did 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 you like Bruce Almighty, Neil? I did enjoy Bruce yeah. Almighty. Yeah. I, I was a Jim Carrey fan. I have a little, and so. You know, yeah. I knew it was going to be a money grab when I saw it coming out, but sure. So, wh- yeah. why do you think that um, Evan Almighty failed at the office, the box office? Uh, I think they just tried. Like I said, it was pretty much just a money grab. They were trying to just continue the success. Uh, I think they did from the original one, um, but they had yeah. that huge ship they had to build, and it just did not pan out. Yeah, the CGI in it wasn't very good. So the budget was initially $200 million, Gosh. Um, not counting for the marketing, and then the box office was only $173 million. Um, which, I mean, uh, Leadfeather, our production company that hosts this podcast, yeah. uh, if we could have a budget of $173 million, I would just shit a brick. That'd be great. Um, yeah. But yeah, for a studio like this. I don't know. I mean, I think it was, you know, it was Steve Carell before he was really, really big. He when was did, getting there. He when was did on it come out? Way. In two thousand seven, yeah, two thousand seven. I yeah. think I don't know. I just, I mean, he they he was they were kind of writing his star power from Forty Year Old Virgin, which came out about two years prior to yeah. that. Yeah, and The Office started. Around and The Office that time. was running. Yeah, at the time. Um, yeah. So Neil, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably was. They were trying. Yeah, they were trying to continue the success of the first one because it just blew up. Um, Ian, what about you? Um, I, I have a couple ones actually, but different. Yeah, go ahead. Um. Uh, should I talk about a, a big blockbuster flop or a cult, a very save, famous cult save your, one? Yeah, save, save your cult classics for the next okay, time. Go cool, ahead and do cool. your blockbuster, yeah. Okay. Uh, my favorite flop of all time is Last Action Hero. That was a flop? That was a flop? Oh, my I love God. Last Action Hero. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it, it, it made no money because it came out the same week as Jurassic Park. Really? And, uh, I yeah. did not hear that. And, no shit. Yeah, and so, yeah, nobody really knew it existed mm -hmm. except for the few who did. And no, mm -hmm. I agree with you. It's it's uh, it's a great movie. It's it's my fa I'd say it's my favorite um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, besides Terminator. But, More than Conan? Um, I mean, it's a John <sighs> Tiernan, McTiernan film, so if you are if you like any action movie... Ever. Yeah, I love how just how self aware it is, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though it came out the same weekend at Jurassic Park, it still grossed over fifteen million. Did it? Okay. And maybe. then it still turned a profit in the end of a uh, uh. hundred thirty seven million after a budget well, of eighty five million. Yeah, I guess but I'm still, full of shit though. But so no, but that's that's still <laughs> not that's still not accounting for like like you were saying like Eric was saying the marketing mm -hmm. and the advertising to get into the seats and you know the amount of money that they have to pay people outside of um, I, outside of post. Yeah, I guess that goes to show you just don't release a movie when the be best director is releasing a movie. You know, <laughs> oh, you know it's and been months what, since we've done, and, and that's when Steven Spielberg was Gary. at his prime. Primo. Oh, you know what? I'll give that to you. It, that was his heyday from the '70s to 2000. Yeah. So okay, kudos to you. No, I mean, but I think like, especially like at this time, it was '93. Schwarzenegger was still one of the biggest actors in Hollywood. Oh, I yeah. feel like that movie should have made more. Oh yeah, him and Stallone were like, yeah, they, they were I still mean, at the top of their true careers. Lies was I don't remember. Didn't didn't he get nominated for a Razzie? For, was he? For Last Action Hero? I think I, so. I think he got... I, I think he got, Let me look. I think he got nominated for Best Actor. I don't think that was a Razzie, yes, though. Yes, he did. Good call, Neil. Really? Uh, he, he, got, he got nominated worst for Best Actor. actor. He, no, no, Worst no, Actor. No, the Razzie. Oh, okay, okay. The Razzie, yeah. Oh, my okay, God. Okay. That is freaking hilarious. I did not know that. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I I don't think that's well, fair. I mean, like, he, he played that part exactly like, as it needed to be. Dude, he called himself Arnold Braunschweiger. It's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> hashtag meta. Yeah, but, but yeah. Burt Reynolds won that year. I mean, it was a tight race. It had Robert Redford right, right, for right. his indecent proposal, he, William Baldwin for Sliver, Willem Dafoe for Body of Evidence, Arnold Schwarzenegger for Last Action Hero. Dafoe. And then the winner was Burt Reynolds for Cop and a Half. Wait a minute, Robert Redford was nominated for a Razzie? For, for Worst in, Actor? For Indecent Proposal? That was a fine movie. It was, it was okay. I mean, okay, it, speaking of Razzies, all right, I changed my answer. Catwoman. That's or probably that, more that accurate. Far? Yes, Catwoman was a huge flop, absolutely. All the lists that I looked at, Catwoman okay, cool, was definitely cool. in their top 15. Because, I mean, um, I know that that was definitely one of the worst movies of all time. But, uh, yeah, so I changed my answer to Catwoman. Yeah, and I think, let me see, because with that one, yeah, that had a budget of not, uh, you know, not counting for marketing or any of the additional uh, advertising. That was a budget of $100 million, and then box office only brought in 82 And you also have to remember for the box office, too, just like you were stating, that's not just for its initial release. With right. The person. That's if it, like, comes back out. Yeah, later. that's the entire theatrical right. release. Right, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and I guess nowadays would be... Um, I wonder if they would count the streaming service too. I don't know. We'll have to look that up. I think but, that's a debate that they're having right now in Hollywood. <laughs> probably. Yes. Uh, so yeah, Gary, what about yours? Uh, mine is going to be Cleopatra. Uh, that was a extremely expensive movie that came out in, I think 1963. Um, and basically bankrupted, uh, MGM when it yeah. came out. Oh, um, and you know, it, you know, it's just, uh, I think, uh, a testament to the, because that's kind of, in my mind, the, yes. uh, the the height, the apex of the studio system trying to do something that's just gigantic movie. And then, you know, it just sort of breaks the bank for, you know, MGM yeah. and kind of well, it, begins it, their downfall. I mean, because that was, that 63 was technically the last year of the studio yeah. system. And they're just, they're desperately trying to throw, mm -hmm. kind of like Netflix right now, they're trying to throw anything at the wall and see if it sticks. Mm -hmm. And they're just trying desperately to get as much out as they can. And they're pushing this. I mean, this was... Five and a half hours long. It, it's an epic movie. Five and a half hours. Like there's an intermission. That's an event. Yeah. That's an event. There was one intermission. I would think there'd be two. Uh, that's a three act play right there almost. That's yeah. Short. That's longer than a three act play. Yeah. I, yeah. It, it's it's a long movie. <laughs> Jeez, man. But uh, it, it was a good movie if you ever have a chance to watch it. It 
you know, if you're into history, so, it covers so a whole the, lot. So here's the thing, and I, I understand, we talked about the fall of the studio system, and many times we reference the, you know, if you haven't seen our, our 1960s fall of the studio system episode, check it out. Um, but we've talked about that multiple times. Why, why do you think it flopped? I mean, at the time, it was the biggest budget in Hollywood, mm. and it had a bunch of A-list actors. What, what do you think happened? Well, I, I think that the budget was just so big on it that it couldn't really recoup its loss. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, because I think, you know, uh, well, I think the budget on it was something like 200, like, like $150 million back in 1963 or something. Uh-huh. But like, you know, the, and that's just uh, uh, such a bloated and phenomenal budget that, I mean, it'd be like making a billion dollar movie today. And there's just no way that, you know, you can recoup that. I mean, right. even like Avengers Endgame, which is the highest grossing film of all time, only made two point you know seven billion dollars only 2.7. Yes, um, and, you know, it's just, great. you know, you couldn't, <laughs> you, you can't come you can't make enough money from that at a box office showing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's segue into, uh, the next subtopic here. Uh, I did want to bring up movies that had a poor initial release or a poor, uh, Oh, hang on. You'll just, what'd you send there? Initial box office kind of run and then later recoup that. Yeah, correct. Well, it didn't necessarily recoup the overall, loss (laughs) loss <laughs> it didn't recoup the overall investment uh but it did gain cult status icon mm-hmm. uh at one point or another um so ian since you you've got a couple already uh loaded in the barrel uh, uh yeah. why don't you start us off yeah uh first uh, shameless plug not only am i the host of movie so bad that you good podcast but i am also the creator of a facebook group movies so bad they're good comma midnight cult classics and camp so okay. a, Sounds a like third a cool of the movies movie. we cover are is this exact topic, perfect. which is why I'm you're, glad you invited me on. You're here the because, perfect man you know, for the job, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could I could list dozens, but uh, I think the the main the biggest one uh, is we've already talked about it before the room. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a big one. Okay, that's that's not what I thought you were gonna break, mention, but all right. Uh, interesting. Okay, why? Uh, uh, I, or, I, I, I mean, I can, I can mention some others. So. No, 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 no. That's that's fantastic. Let's start with that one. That's 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 a movie that I, we. I mean, Gary and I are definitely in agree. That's that's the Cadillac of bad films. That's a movie yeah. so yeah. horrendous. It's fucking fantastic. Well, it, yes. it's also a, a major major cult classic. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like actually. I think it was like a six million dollar budget for that movie. Like, yeah. Tommy yeah. Wiseau yeah. hadn't bought was, all of his camera equipment and just <laughs> rented it like any normal it's, person. It's more than that, <laughs> he he uh, like actually, I read the book about it. Like, yeah, the disaster artist. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And like, they had to go back and reshoot like every scene, yep. pretty much. And yeah, yeah. It, it was just a disaster. They the it was so it was so the working on set with him was so terrible. That the initial oh, it, the initial camera crew quit. They just they upped and left. They're they were done. They were absolutely yeah. done. So yeah, not, not only that, yeah. not only that, he fired a lot of them too, and yeah. the entire cast was replaced like three times. Yeah, yeah, they had to. So they had to come back, and I can't remember if they went to USC or UCLA, but they went to one of the universities, and they just found students. Yeah, and they, that's how they got their first AC and their DP, and so people that had worked on student films but never had really been mm. on a professional set. Not that this was, but I mean, the guy was so cheap. Certain days when it was a hundred degrees out, he wouldn't even turn on the damn air conditioner yeah. or have a costume mm-hmm. budget. Or have a costume budget. Yeah, you can see. I mean, <laughs> if you go back and look at the costumes in this. Fr- who? It's very obvious just, that those just are getting... just off the rack from like. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there were uh, there was a scene with um, them wearing those suits. Right, yeah, that's true. So but if you he paid but, for those. Who who wears a blazer, a white white a white beater, a white t shirt, <laughs> uh, car- cargo pants, yeah. and like a, a belt with that's zip-offs. two sizes with with yeah exactly and zip offs and a belt that's two sizes too large. Uh, <laughs> when, when Lisa, when Lisa, when he gives Lisa the dress, and he's just, he's like, "It looks beautiful, darling." She's like, "How do I look?" I'm like, "You look horrible." It's terrible looking. You're not dress a bad looking woman, but that dress is so unflattering, and you can tell they bought it at Salvation Army. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's just, just no way. There's no way. 
Um, I, I don't even remember. Ian, do you remember what the what they ended up making just in the initial run, like the one theater that it was open It's like a thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look it up really quick. Well, it, it was a $6 million film and it cost $1,000, or you made $1,000, so that's not bad. <laughs> $6 million budget, $1,800 at the box office. Okay, all right. But that's all he needed in order yeah, to get into the yeah, Oscars. Yeah, he, he paid to keep it running in the theater so that it would contend with the Oscars. Yeah, I remember that. He had that, uh, They you remember he rented that billboard mm-hmm. in uh, yeah. downtown L.A.? <laughs> and he had his phone number on there. I think that still up, actually. I think it's they, still they, up. They, I, th- I thought I heard they took it down a couple years ago, actually actually um, oh really yeah yeah but it was up for like over over a decade and a half like it was just it was nuts <laughs> i mean it was it's and, like, and, it had a, like his home phone number on it too <laughs> yeah. I, and i would just like to point out johnny googled um uh the room and it has a 4.7 stars out of five hell yeah. on its uh, audience summary hell yes so yeah, there you go. What what is what is the critic score? Did the critics even watch that and review Gary, it? The I'm criti- sure I mean, they Rotten didn't. Tomatoes gave it twenty five percent, which I'm surprised it was that high. And Metacritic gave it nine percent. IMDb gave it three point seven yeah, it's stars. It's a masterpiece. Oh, it is a masterpiece. It's one of the greatest <laughs> films ever made. I think we can. I think yeah. we can in that. It might be the best. It, it, it might be. It might be the. It might it be the, the best. It's the Citizen Kane of every movie. It is. It, it's the Citizen Kane <laughs> of bad movies. Why is that? Was the Alfred Hitchcock of crap? I mean, he is. Um, so, so, um, so Ian, you said you had another one. Do do you have any in there that, um, were kind of like, uh, I guess like bigger budget films that ended up becoming cult classics? Like Um, a, like a Donnie Darko kind of thing? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have the numbers, but apparently you all can can look look this up. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, y'all probably don't know about this. I'll, I'll be, uh, really excited if it did. If you do, although Johnny, I have actually talked to you about this uh, before. Okay. Uh, the director Alejandro Yodorowsky. Okay. He he directed a film called The Holy Mountain. The Holy Mountain. I I, I, mean, I recall the director's name. I don't recall the movie itself. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, before I get into this, before The Holy Mountain in 1971, I believe he directed a movie called El Topo, which. Okay. Um, Fun fact is the very first midnight movie uh-huh. ever made. Like uh-huh. it, it spawned that whole thing in the seventies when, uh-huh. you know, at midnight they did the theaters showed unrated and X-rated movies, and El Topo was the first one. It's not mm-hmm. like a porn or anything, but it's it's just it's not a mainstream movie. Yeah, so yeah, it doesn't uh, seem like it. Yeah, uh-huh. oh, not at all. I'll check and it out. So, it's great. It's amazing. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it gained this cult status mm-hmm. that the Beatles were very into. And so really? the the producer of the Beatles, Alan Klein, mm-hmm. he financed Alejandro Jodorowsky's next movie, That's right. The Holy Mountain. I, remember yeah. this. I do remember you telling me uh, this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, George Harrison was supposed to be in it to play the Jesus character, but he decided not to because he didn't want to show his butthole on the screen. Did we get to see <laughs> Jesus's butthole on screen in the Holy Yeah, Man? No, we, uh, we okay, had to. It now. Jesus we is softcore porn. Yeah, all right. And, and, and <laughs> it's not, no, it's not even softcore porn. It's just a close up of his butthole for a second. What kind of sick, sadistic person would make a movie about a butthole? Jeez, I don't know. It's not about. I thought it was a Ledbetter film that uh, revolved around this very topic. Uh, Maybe an international uh, film festival yeah, award cult winner. Yeah, classic. Yeah. 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 You know, beauty truly is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, I agree, so, Johnny. Yeah. I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. But yeah, it, it's not about his butthole. It's, it's a very. It's like <laughs> a, just a random part in the movie. Uh, but apparently it had to be shown and it's so so bad that george harrison decided not to be in it okay and uh but alan klein still decided to finance it and then it, it bombed it did really badly so badly that alan klein the asshole that he is was yeah. so pissed off that he took everything that Elio, uh sorry alejandro yodorowsky did his first three films, uh, one called Fanu Elis, that's his first one, then El Topo, then Holy Mountain, put him in a vault for like 20 years and 
or maybe 30 years and nobody can access them uh uh-huh. hmm. so uh yeah yeah okay. um but uh yeah it, it eventually even even though it was locked in a vault it still maintained cult status i mean there were duplicates that were made that um illegally yeah <laughs> illegally <laughs> but uh yeah i mean that's how cult status this movie was is that like Jeez. even though it's not accessible it still became one of the greatest cult films of all time and i think that's that's what's fantastic about cult is, is about cult classics is the fact that they can they can really like 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 you're saying they can really have no audience whatsoever ahead of time they can completely bomb at the box office but 10 mm-hmm. to even 50 years later you know there's there's some famous scene that's used in a commercial or somebody somebody uh, drops a, they drop a hashtag for it or something online and all of a sudden everything goes viral and everybody wants to check the damn movie out you know um, so especially you know especially over the last 10 years it's crazy now the, the age that we live in you know that w- that we can do that with films like this um, did you have any other ones or yeah yeah uh, I, have, I have another one called repo man yes oh oh so, my goodness repo man i'm so happy uh, you brought repo man up oh uh, yeah oh yeah you know our, our mutual friend lucas hates it he hates <laughs> it so much well you know he doesn't like good films so i'm not gonna take his <laughs> opinion very highly yes. on this <laughs> dude you, you, you need to send this episode to him and tell him the exact time spot to listen to it I, I, I will. so happy to piss him off like that don't you worry because <laughs> he's, he's so he's so mad at me for showing it to him like like 10 years ago 15 it's years ago yeah. West of it, isn't it? So. yeah it's intentionally <laughs> it's got harry dean stanton in it yeah it's 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 like but it's one of those movies that it's just intentionally horrible like they did it on purpose you know um to my knowledge, that was the first movie that they kind used of, yeah. g- generic labels for, like, say, like, when they're drinking the beer, just this beer on the can, you know, or he picks up a book. Yeah, I book. love that so much. Yeah. I, I, I love and that. the reason for that right there is because they couldn't um, afford to to right. get any brand names in there. Sure, but also, sure. there, there's a there's a sub meaning behind that is because it was during the Reagan administration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that... Yeah, so it's basically a message saying that everything has become more commercialized. And, right. it, you know, it's like there's no products. Everything is just so generic. Yeah, because I, I know the, the budget on that one was actually pretty low. It was uh, one and a half million. Yeah. Um, and I think, let's see, their box office w- return was 3.7. So, I mean, you know, if, so adding the marketing, they th- yeah, so they probably, they probably broke even well, on it. Here, well, here's the thing, is that it already before it was released, it wasn't going to be released. The, I heard a story that the studio wouldn't allow it. Like, they were just like, fuck this movie. It's not going to uh-huh. see the light of day. But then they released the soundtrack to it, which is one of the best soundtracks of all time, I it think. It's pretty great. It, it's amazing. And the... Uh, soundtrack became very popular the soundtrack actually got a cult status following uh-huh. and and really? then uh yeah and then people loved the soundtrack so much that they were like we gotta see this movie and then they released the movie hmm. Damn, okay. which is very unique you know not many yeah. films have that yeah that's that's true you know i mean the only one i can think of that that could be i mean i know that um you know you talk about like the graduate um and that you know propelled simon and garfunkel's careers but i don't I, i'm pretty sure the movie was still a commercial success without even the soundtrack but that's cra- that's crazy yeah um, but yeah the soundtrack became popular before the movie even came out yeah yeah nice and man. saved uh, the movie it, it probably did because i mean but i i don't know i guess that technically i guess that catapulted emilio estevez's career because i think breakfast catapulted Club, it, yeah well, I mean, I think breakfast. Uh, let's well, let's see here. I'm pretty sure Breakfast Club was eighty six after that, right? So yeah, yeah. It was Repo yeah, Man was eighty four? Yeah. So, oh, eighty five. My bad. Yeah. Then you got like St. Elmo's. Yeah, Fire. All, all those kind of run together real close. Yeah, eighty five. Yeah. So I, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're right. So it was right before he was he was an A lister and stuff. And I I think a lot of the stuff with a lot of these flops too. Another thing we didn't talk about was the fact that they try to they try to ride on the back of an a-list star 
mm-hmm. for for such a long time, and they they do it at the wrong time, you know. And we'll go into we're gonna we to, I'll just mention it now. Uh, the Adventures of Pluto Nash we had talked about with Eddie Murphy, right? Yeah, um, that was actually that lost all over a hundred million dollars at the box office. Um, I mean, this the script was. The script was cheesy and unfunny, and the special effects for a budget that high were really just mediocre for the time. It was it came out in the mid to late two thousands. Yeah. Um, and Eddie Murphy, like you know, he was long past his days of the Nutty Professor and Doctor Doolittle and uh, Beverly Hills Cop and you know a, a ton of other great films that he was in. Um, but you you know I guess even with a, a star with Emilio like Emilio Estevez you know you can't Emilio ride Emilio Estevez sometimes the you can't ride their coattails man. to uh, to to success I suppose. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, Neil, what about you? So for me, one of my favorite cult classics that was initially a flop in the box office. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people have seen it, and if you saw it, you probably saw it on DVD because it did not do very well in theaters, <laughs> but. Everybody knows that you hate working in an office, and if you come in, you got a bad Spy case Club. of the Mondays. No, it's yes, office space. Office space. Space. Spy Club. You get the hell out of here, man. That also did lose money. <laughs> Jeez. What? So what? Uh, I didn't know Office Space did that bad at the. What was the box office numbers on that? Uh, it says that uh, through its run in the box office, it only made ten point eight million. Really. It's probably because everybody's like, you know what? This is my day to day life. I don't want to see a movie about that. So I don't want to watch a movie about myself. Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> true. I mean, who would watch a show about nothing? Nobody would do that. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't make didn't make Seinfeld the most successful sitcom of all time, <laughs> or one of them. Oh man, what uh, did it, does it say on there? What the the initial budget was? Uh, I did not. I can look it up. No, that's okay. Uh, let me know when you get it. Um, but yeah, I, that you know that's. God, that's 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 so funny because I guess it's funny riding on the coattails of Beavis and the Butthead. You know, uh, Mike Judge comes in. He's just like he's like, oh well, here's this great idea. Let me do this. And I can't think of anybody I've ever met that has said they don't enjoy Office Space. I'm sure there's people out there. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, it says the uh, budget was 12.2 million, and, and its okay. box office ran was 10.8. Okay, yeah, so then- it was technically a flop. It did yeah. make over eight million just in DVD sales once it was released. That's pretty good. And then I can't imagine what it's made since then, and people streaming it, and you know, um, syndication on TV and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it, it right. Ran. Um, yeah, that, that, that's a good one. I, I didn't even know that was a flop. I would have, I would have thought with such a small budget and not a bunch of big name stars at the time, because mm-hmm. um, I mean Jennifer Aniston and Ron Livingston. Um, Stephen Root. Stephen Root. I don't remember them being um, Gary Cole. I don't remember any of them being gigantic stars in the early nine or um, when did that come out? Sorry, not nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Late nineties. Yeah, I think most of them were not super established at that point. I guess Aniston with Friends, but even then, she hadn't yeah. really started her movie career. Um, that's a good one. Um, good find, Neil. Yeah, uh, Gary. What about you? Uh, mine's a little movie that you may have heard of. I don't know. It's called The Wizard of Oz. The so, Wizard of Oz. Yes. Yeah, so I didn't know that was considered a flop. Okay, tell well, me about it. <laughs> okay, so The Wizard of Oz was uh, released in 1939, um, and it was MGM's most like it, it was one of their highest budget movies. Uh, I- MGM again. Sure. It was one of their highest budget movies, and um, it did not do well in uh, in theaters. Okay. Um, it was only ten years later when they re-released it in 1949 that they started to recoup that money. Um, and actually make a profit from uh, The Wizard of Oz. And, you know, since then, it's, of course, gone on to gross a lot of money um, and make, uh, you know, become a... And like six or seven Academy Awards. For, yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, but, like, it, when it first came out, it was not a very uh, um, a popular movie. I mean, 1939, you had, you know, uh, you know, really big, you know, movies coming out. Like, you know, Gone with the Wind was, like, the highest grossing movie of all time uh, when adjusted for inflation. So that was kind of hard to compete with, but... Um, you know, I, it, it, it's just kind of interesting to think that such a, a profound movie uh, was a, a, a flop at the time and not recognized for what it is. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I had no idea. I'm super surprised <laughs> that, that, that actually, uh, God, I, I am just, I'm shocked that that was considered a flop at the time. I mean, that, yeah, that was yeah. part of the, like, epitome of my childhood, like, you know, right. when I was a kid, you know, like that and. 
I was watching like Sound of Music and uh, yeah, it's like, it's like required viewing pretty yeah, much. Like it's a wonderful Wizard life or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't seen Wizard of Oz, then you you haven't lived. You're probably not human. Yeah. yeah. You're probably not. <laughs> you're you're probably you're probably just a douchebag. Um, for me, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to go with <laughs> one that people may have oh, heard, oh, 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 heard of before. Oh, oh, sorry. But, what? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had this image in my head of like some like African child who's just starving and just can't eat or drink for their entire life, and you you just show up to them. Have you seen Wizard of Oz? It's like what? <laughs> you're a douchebag. <laughs> you haven't. You're a horrible fucking human being. You haven't seen the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> if you haven't been, uh, if you haven't seen the Tin Man line and the Scarecrow dance down the Yellow Brick Road, then your life is a failure. Uh, they would would probably speaking of which, what, yeah, was game. the Wiz yeah. was the Wiz a uh, flop as well? Uh, then like one from the nineteen seventies. I yeah. think so. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, yeah, nobody beats me because I'm the Wiz. The Wiz. <laughs> well, not that Wiz. Not, not that Wiz. Take the Wiz. That no. <laughs> was <laughs> Wiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, what did it? What did it get for? Just go down. Just it, it'll say it'll say the budget, right there if you scroll down. Sure. Budget box was twenty four million. Okay, and the box office was twenty one. So yeah, yeah, a bit of a flop. Yeah, I guess not super, Hell super yeah. horrible. Bah, 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 bah. Still having Michael Jackson and Diana Ross in there. That's that is a little surprising. You think they would have done a little better, especially in the seventies. Um, but anyways, uh, so for mine, I had picked uh, It's a Wonderful Life, the Christmas classic that really, really? T- tugs on your heartstrings mm-hmm. and, and melts melts your icy heart away if you're a stone cold bitch. Exactly. Uh, no, I mean, so for a lot of people that for a lot of people that don't know, when It's a Wonderful Life came out, it honestly it, it had a budget of about. 3.2 million um you know not counting the marketing of course and the box office was about 3.3 so they they lost the studio lost a little bit but back in you know the 40s when it initially uh, came out and was released that's a that's a lot of money you know that's a ton of money um uh yeah no i mean despite it initially uh and i just what did you? Oh, uh, despite it initially getting mixed reviews and being considered a box office flop, the film has become a classic and is a staple of. Yeah, no, that that's true. Yeah, that's a good. Neil just sent me a message about that. Um, yeah, no, it is. It is a staple of Christmas television because uh, I remember seeing it for the first time when I was I was probably seven or eight, and it was on NBC on Christmas Eve every single mm-hmm. year. Every All single, day. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it, it was like watching uh, a Christmas story on TNT for twenty four hours straight, or watching. Um, uh, what was the movie about Moses and the the commandments? Ten Commandments. Just the Ten Commandments. Yeah, that was always on during Easter. <laughs> yeah, always. You know. Um, so. I, yeah, I you, you know. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, you, you know, I I was listening to your best actors episode that you did that I dropped recently, and I believe you said something about it's a wonderful life because you were you were talking about. Uh, his movies. I'm Jimmy Stewart. Right now. Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart. Stewart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy you were talking Stewart, about yeah. his movies, and I believe you said like, if you haven't seen *It's a Wonderful Life*, then you're un-American or not human or something like that. I probably said you're. Yeah. Probably said you're not human. You probably yeah. said you're a douchebag. You know. You're a so yeah. yeah. That's. That's. that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, I feel like that's a, that's. Hopefully, it's an international movie at this point. Hopefully, people in Europe and Canada have seen yeah. it. I don't know. It's um, in the public domain. Oh, probably so, Europe yeah. for sure. Absolutely, but they wouldn't let it initially. They initially, yeah. I mean, like like you had pointed out, they they didn't get it didn't get super great reviews. The main reason for it being the 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 discussion or the major hints at suicide because Jimmy Stewart was you know he's saying I have this horrible life. I I want. I just, I don't want to live anymore. And he mm-hmm. goes to the bridge on the major river in Bedford Falls, and he's about to jump in. And obviously, Clarence, his guardian angel, jumps in to save him, you know, thus thus sustaining his livelihood and his, his life and realizing he's touched all these all these people. So um, an interesting that, digression to that would be, um, you know, the studio system, uh, we, as we talked about in our uh, one of our episodes, you know, they... Right tried to control a lot of uh, the ideas that came out. So suicide right. is actually kind of a, 
a uh, uh, an, a hot topic for them to put out, and they put that out there, and it still didn't kind of perform no, it didn't, well. Yeah. So that's the, that's the interesting. The one time they took a yeah. they took a stab and they took a jump yeah. at it. It, it, it failed, mm -hmm. yeah, and it, it didn't pick up until you know a decade or you know fifteen years later when they started uh, when the, the the TV syndication for it on NBC and whatever other major networks picked it up. They were just playing it all the time, um, and uh, you know back to just really quick. You had mentioned Wizard of Oz with mm -hmm. MGM. I this is this is the kind of crap that I'm talking about with those studio executives. Like I'm glad the studio system failed. I mean these guys. If you've ever read anything on Judy Garland, she. She would get no sleep. She never ate. What they would do is they would give her, they would you know they would go in and they would give her barbiturates at night so she could sleep, and they'd force her to sleep on drugs. And then in the morning when she'd wake up, they'd give her methamphetamines so she'd wake up and be active for you know sixteen to eighteen hours a day. And uh, I don't know. Sorry, I, I just I just had to add that in just so people know how how big of douchebags. I know I like that word. You, you really do. Were back then. Um, anywho. <laughs> So yeah, so so I'd, I'd say that, that was a pretty good list for for everybody all around. Um, really quick uh, to kind of to kind of wrap us up, I, there were a couple movies we did want to talk about really quick. Um, you, we had mentioned Evan Almighty was or was already in there, and we mentioned Pluto, this Adventures of Pluto Nash. So I will take those out. Um, and for those of you on the panel, if you haven't seen these movies, it's cool. Um, it's not a big deal. I'm sure you've at least heard of them. Um, some, another one of the, the, the biggest, these, these four movies, uh, were on a lot of the list mm -hmm. that Gary and I had looked at, um, for biggest flops of all time. Uh, the, the biggest one we had just talked about, but I feel like we need to make fun of it more is cats. Cats. Let's, I, I want to make fun of cats again for a second. I, <laughs> all alone in the moonlight. I don't, I don't want you to do that anymore. Oh, okay. Well. Um, has anyone here on the panel seen cats? I have. Good. I have not. I was hoping you'd be the yeah. only one because yeah. I want you to talk about your experience with it, Gary. Uh, my experience was. Um, <laughs> Why did you go see it? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I, right? yeah, I, I don't even have the excuse of uh, having the movie pass and just using it. True. Um, we it, did have the regal movie pass. True. Yeah, but like, uh, it was just a uncomfortable, awkward. Uh, bad two and a half hours or however long the movie is of my life. And oh, it's like, like they, dinner with our families. Got it. Yeah. 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 And like, um, <laughs> you know, they didn't um, finish all the CGI, I guess, um, because you can see some of the cats are wearing sneakers. And then there's this one shot when uh, they're. Judy Dench. <laughs> Well, uh, there's this one shot when I can't remember one of the cats oh. is dancing down the alleyway and he's like not he's like not opaque. He's a little bit translucent because they didn't, I guess, finish cropping him in or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's just really weird, like uh, how they animated the, the cats. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was, it was a cool idea and I see where they were coming from, but it just, it was a strange, strange movie how they chose to put all that together. It, it, you know, I, I didn't see the Broadway show when it was on Broadway, yeah. but I imagine that um, that's a lot of where they drew their inspiration for Probably it. Probably all of it. And so I, I guess what, because on the Broadway version, they, they dress all of them in full body cat suits. Basically what you might think of, of, I guess a furry might look like. I've never actually met somebody who's into that. But, I, you know, they dress them, they have the cat makeup and they have the full body costumes and stuff. And... I almost, I know that that works for the stage and you can't, you you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I almost feel like that would have just been a better take on it to do for the film. Like instead <laughs> of just doing these CGI cats and spending a giant, you know, spending almost 50% of your budget on the, the, the effects. Why don't you just, would just spend some money on the costumes? And cause they, they had, it had a, from the, all the reviews I had watched and seen, they had pretty good effects. It had a decent cast. Um, I've never been a huge fan of the musical, honestly. It's no, one it's, of my least favorites. Yeah, it's not a great musical. It, it, it's essentially a story about these cats and, you know, they're just normal cats. <laughs> and they, 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 so sacri they sacrifice their, they, they basically have a contest with all the cats in the city. And one of the cats gets selected to ride a hot air balloon chandelier up into the sky Okay, that was to, that was part of. They didn't just add that into the movie. Okay, so no, that, that's supposed okay. to be part of it. Like that's that's part yeah. of the actual story. Because um, that was it was strange. The whole thing, yeah, like a hot air balloon yeah. chandelier. What are those calico cats doing? I, I don't, don't know. know. And then apparently, so like, there's the contest, but basically, 
there's one, there's that opening song, I forgot what it was, that explains all of this. Yeah. And then the rest of the movie is just songs about you meeting different types of cats. Yeah. There's a fancy cat, there's a fat fancy cat, there's some twin cats that like to get into trouble <laughs> and knock plates off tables. Shot? There is a pimp cat. There's a pimp cat. There's yeah. Idris Elba plays a pimp cat. <laughs> and then oh Judy... <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mistopheles or something, I think, is his name in that. Yes. And Judy Dench is in it, and she has this... Wasn't she the one that had the really uncomfortable scene where she broke the fourth wall and just stared directly at the audience for like a five-minute solo? You're going to have to narrow it down when you say uncomfortable scene, Johnny. I mean, like, yeah. I, I never well, saw it, man. Would you I say just, that's just a read up no, so uh, it was just a like, solo, a five-minute solo. Like she just had a song yeah, by so, herself. Yeah. Uh, so I don't remember if it was a story. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what I love, what I, what I love about this movie is not only did it win six Razzies, yep, but both Judy Dench <laughs> and Rebel Wilson were nominated as War Supporting wow. Actresses. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rebel Wilson was re- really not good in that. Well, she I mean, won a Razzie for it. She did win a Razzie for it, and as we know, you know, if if you know, if you win a, win a Razzie, you're in the same company as Burt Reynolds. That's good company to be in. Yeah. But it was also nominated for favorite movie actress for Taylor Swift by the Kids Choice Award. <laughs> I I need, I need something to drink. <laughs> I mean, so the box office. The box office currently, I mean, it's not in theaters anymore, was about $75 million, and this is also the movie, like we said earlier, that it, it, it debuted the same weekend as Star Wars. Um, and the budget was ninety five, about $100 million, not counting the marketing. So it's uh, just a gigantic flop right there. I, yeah. I, I think that the day and age, honestly, I, you know me, I personally have always loved musicals. Um, and I, 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 I miss the golden era of Hollywood where they had the, the singing in the rain, sound of music. Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, mm-hmm. American in Paris, whatever. Um, but it's just they're done. They, they're you know movie musicals. They're done. They've had their time in the sun, and they they need. It's like zombie movies. They need to stop doing them. You know they're not making any money anymore. So uh, La La Land made money. There was one that made some pretty good money. That, La La Land was not a full Hugh movie. Jack- no, mu- not that full one. Movie. Uh, yeah, the Greatest Showman is what you're thinking of. But hang on, yeah, the yeah, La La Land yeah. was not. How a- did you know? <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've just I've seen all these I, I have like the Regal I, I have the Regal movie pass I go to like one to two movies a week it's it's crazy but La La Land was not a full time. movie musical though it it right but neither was like you know uh, I mean like uh, The Sound of Music was a, it was an operetta like it didn't have 100% music but it was based off of a musical right but I mean like you know it, uh, the, that was the musical it was based off of was an opera like uh, Evita is an opera because the whole True. thing is sung. Yeah. But uh, like a lot of those are just operettas because not the whole things are sung. All right. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, next one on the list that we had uh, seen a lot of was uh, Sahara. Sahara, yeah. yeah. Uh, really, uh, one of my favorite Matthew McConaughey movies. Really? Yeah. I like Sahara. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think I would put that in my top like five Matthew McConaughey films. But oh, why, why, okay, why do you like that so scene much? where he's like, oh, mum, 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 that's, mum. that's from Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, oh, crap. Oh, my God. I'm thinking <laughs> of the wrong one. No. It's all right. We're, we're all oh, up today. Goodness. I couldn't <laughs> think of the movie about the Ten Commandments that was called Ten Commandments. Yeah. So. Um, no, Sahara was a fun movie. Like, it was like, um, like kind of a... It was just sort of a stupid action movie, like, you know, and, you know, it had kind of adventure to it. it you know, it didn't, it had some cool, memorable characters. Um, but, you know, it, you know, I, I don't know why it didn't perform, you know, average. It, I mean, it, I mean, because it had Matthew McConaughey, Penelope yeah. Cruz, Steve Zahn was big at the time. William H. Macy's always yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so for, I don't know, for action movies back in the mid 2000s and stuff i feel like because it, it made at the box office about 120 million i feel like that's still a pretty good haul yeah you yeah, know but absolutely. when your your budget is 130 yeah you just can't yeah. recoup that and what was the the scene you were talking about uh you had uh, research they oh, filmed yeah. the the two million dollar airplane crash that they didn't yes. put in the actual oh then you were the one that was telling me that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they didn't even use it yeah <laughs> That's something you don't want to leave on the cutting room floor. Uh, some of us are never going to make $2 million mm. collectively in our lives. Right. You know? Or, uh, yeah. Why? Why Why would you do that? You know? Poor planning. Yeah, very poor planning. Um, it would be interesting to see, like, what movies, like, like had the biggest uh, budgets for scenes that did not make it on onto the screen. Yeah. Like, you know, um, for the, you know, even the director's cut, you know, how many didn't, you know, make it there. True. True. Um, you know, and I think with Sahara too, you know, that, that was, that was at 2005 when it came out was right before what they call, um, the, the reconnaissance, 
which is basically Matthew McConaughey's rise to being a, a bigger A-lister than he even was at that point. Because, um, you know, he had he had a lot of good stuff in the late 80s, early 90s, and then he kind of took a bit of a back seat for about 10 years and then... Um, Played some bongos, smoked some marijuana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Get, got yep. arrested. For those of you that, that don't know, Matthew McConaughey is actually... He was actually... He's not from Austin initially, but he's from Texas, and he resides here. He went to University of Texas at Austin. Um, he's currently a professor for in their film school. Um, and it was funny. My girlfriend and I, about a year and a half ago, were at Barton Creek Mall, mm-hmm. and we just we had gone to see something. Um, and we're walking to our car, and we see this van coming towards us. And I shit you not, it's Matthew McConaughey driving. And he's got the okay. window down, and he's, like, leaning out the window, and he's got his family with him, and he drives past us, and he's yelling out the window, I'm Michael Douglas. I'm Michael <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> he just drives. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> drops that's off great. his family, and then the, I can hear his wife say, okay, see you later, and he just drives off, and that was it. The one time I've I seen was, Matthew I was waiting close. for you to say, all right, all right, all right, but that's, <laughs> I'm Michael Douglas. That is amazing. I was so shocked. I didn't even yell anything back at him. I feel like I should have just, just to be funny mm-hmm. or just. just I, 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 don't know. I think it's a better story if you don't, you know, just <laughs> le- leave the man alone. What if I just jumped in front of his car and been like, I love your films. And then he hits you and then you sue him for and millions of dollars. And then you can sue him and some money. What, and then that's the origin yes. story of how Johnny became rich. And that's yep. how we start the budget for the Lead Feather universe mm-hmm. yes. and the Lead Feather blockbuster. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Boom. Alvin Strauss in every movie yep. through from here to just, the end of just time. Just sacrifice a leg, Johnny. We need you to do it. <laughs> uh, not you know, worth speaking it. of... Uh, Oh, Matthew McConaughey, I, I've got two films in mind. Um, I don't know if they were bombs, but definitely cult status, Dancing Confused. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's that's cult status. I don't think... I'm gonna I, I think that did bomb at the did theater. It? I don't remember it bombing. Another one filmed in Austin. I mean, that's. I mean, hell, that's how he, that's how he got a start. Um, let's yeah. see. That one was a budget of $7 million. And it doesn't show. Uh, but yeah, they don't even list how much it made. Yeah, so I mean, must have made, made zero. Uh, it looks yeah. like it made. It looks like it made about eight, eight to ten million is what it said. So it made a little bit. Oh uh, okay, uh, but, but pretty, definitely, definitely cult status for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. What was your other one? Ian, what was the other uh, movie you were talking about? Oh, we may have lost Ian. We may have Neil. You still there? Oh, I'm still here. Okay, Neil, uh, what was the other movie he was talking about? <laughs> I have no idea. Ian, do you have any idea? <laughs> well, um, I'd like to talk about a movie that uh, I um, witnessed uh, bombing firsthand. Um, it, in um, I think it was the summer of two thousand one. It was a <laughs> it was a strange time in life. Um, I was really excited because. Uh, Square Pictures was releasing their first and turned out to be only movie that they would ever make called Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. And um, I was so excited to see it because I'm a huge fan of the Final Fantasy franchise. And so my brother Tom and I, we went to the movie theaters to go see it. And uh, opening night and in the theater was myself, my brother Tom, and then one guy who I assume was a critic of some sort who was sitting about four aisles away from us Mm -hmm. who got up and left about 20 minutes into the movie (laughs) um and uh yeah that was uh that movie bombed so terribly that the company Square Pictures uh pretty much dissolved after that um this movie this movie has Alec Baldwin James Woods Donald Sutherland Ving Rhames Steve Buscemi and it's still bombed yeah, yeah. Jeez. And it, it to its credit it was an interesting movie, but the problem was they called it Final Fantasy and it was not a Final Fantasy like it wasn't the it wasn't what a Final Fantasy movie should have been and it it was marketed to the wrong group of people because it was like sort of a it took place on earth kind of like a um aliens kind of attacked movie. Uh, okay. So um, it was, it was, I liked the movie, but it was marketed terribly wrong. It shouldn't have been called Final Fantasy, but uh, yeah, that was a, uh, a bomb that I saw in real time on opening night with just me and my brother. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine that was, that was pretty frustrating. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the fact that you wasted the money. Well, I, I, I didn't feel it was a waste. Oh, I you did, could, you yeah. did enjoy it. I, I okay. enjoyed okay. it. Okay, yeah. I wasn't trivializing yeah. or not. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, okay, since we're we're running a little low on time, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna we had 47 Ronin on here, but I don't know, it's Keanu Reeves, one of his crappier films. Um, so the the, the other one, other one I wanted to uh, bring up before, if you guys want to start throwing in some other stuff you still had on your list, um, was Geely. Geely, um, yes, that classic, oh. that classic Ben Affleck and and J Lo film mm. about. Love in the Mafia. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, this was during the whole, you know, back when they were combining celebrities, couple names to make their one name, you know, the Brangelina and yeah. the, uh, what was theirs? The. I don't remember what Ben Affleck and J-Lo's was. I'm sure it's something easy and I forgot, but it doesn't really matter. Neither here nor there. Anyway, so they were, uh, they were dating at this point and they just thought, hey, what better idea and to make a movie with you two. With that's, you two that's that terrible. you have absolutely no chemistry in. I had the displeasure of not only seeing this movie once, but twice. Uh, Didn't I, they break why? up after that movie? Huh? Didn't they break up after that movie? <laughs> well, I, I think they did. Uh, I don't know how how uh, recently, I, you know, I don't know how recently afterwards it was, but um, yeah, 2003, I think that's around when they did. But uh, they were probably together for publicity only just to promote the film. Yeah, I mean, that's when tabloids were still (laughs) in their heyday. They're still pretty big in the early 2000s. And, you know, they were always bat boy. Huh? The bat boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So this is this is it's constantly been referred to by critics as probably the worst large budget film made in in the history of cinema. It had a budget of 54 million. The box office brought back. God damn, really? Seven and a half. Seven and a half million. Starring two of the biggest A-listers at the time. Now, granted, Ben Affleck has actually rebounded from this quite nicely. Right. I would have to say, um, just from you know his his directing status with uh, the Town and um, Argo and and an assortment of others, Gone Baby Gone, whatever. Um, J Lo herself has not necessarily responded in cinema. She's yeah. been obviously still very involved in. Uh, music and the she did the Super Bowl show last year. She did do the Super Bowl show last year. Looked real good too. That means that's the, she's famous. <laughs> she is famous. Yeah, very good. But uh, Geely, basically, for those of you that have never seen it, I said I'd see it twice. So but the first time I saw it, my parents, when I was like, I think I was, I said 2003. So I guess I was, I was a teenager. I was 14 or 15. Um, uh, my parents thought it would be a great idea to get it as a family film. My mom was oh, like, oh, no. this is great. <laughs> oh, and so no, Mrs. Even, as a, even, <laughs> even as a teenager, <laughs> even as almost almost an adolescent still, I realized this was a, a flaming pile of dog shit. Like, it, I understood the dialogue made no sense. People went from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds mm-hmm. with, with no reasoning at all. Like they would be yeah. talking like a normal conversation like yeah. us. And, and then they, they start yelling. So that sounds very much like The Room. Why is The Room so good and Geely so bad? Well, Geely, <laughs> at least that was entertaining. Geely was not entertaining. And then I had to see it again um, because a girl I was dating a while back hadn't seen it and her friend had told her that uh, it was a really good movie. Obviously, she was trolling her and I warned her and said, no, this is one of the worst fucking movies ever made. And she's like, no, no, I want to watch it. So, so I, I was forced to yeah. sit through so it. So after two minutes of watching it, why didn't she say, you know what? I think you're right. She was trolling me. The person I was dating at the why time. Why would she was, ever yeah. admit that a man was right? There you go. <laughs> Good uh, also, point, Neil. D- <laughs> better question. Did you dump her right after that? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was pretty shortly after that. It had nothing to do with the movie, but that didn't help her case. Um, <laughs> so it's basically just this movie about... Uh, ben Affleck is a wannabe mafia member, and the mafia gives him a job to go kidnap. <laughs> this already with, sounds stupid. A, with, with a kid with cere- <laughs> cerebral palsy. <laughs> what? From, this, from a school that he's like currently living at. He thinks like a 20 year old kid. Um, and so it's basically this mentally handicapped kid. And so he kidnaps him. And then the mafia boss, for some reason, thinks he can't do it, even though Ben Affleck calls him on the phone and says, Hey, I've got the kid with me. I'm going to keep him at my apartment until we're going to make the drop. And the Mafia boss still hires J-Lo, who's supposed to be this really expert assassin and world-renowned kidnapper. And she gets into the mixture, and she's supposed to have killed, like, all these people, but she doesn't come across intimidating at all. Um, Her dialogue... She has this one scene with a group of kids playing basketball, and they're, like, catcalling her and stuff. And she, like, takes the basketball and, like, threatens all of them nonchalantly. And then she's like, 
put that in your pipe and smoke it or something along those lines and takes the ball and lightly slams it into one of the kids chests. So I guess that was supposed to be intimidating. That sounds like a terrible movie, it, Johnny. It, it's awful. Um, and I'm not going to go into any more. Um, Christopher, uh, not Christopher Walken, uh, Al Pacino comes in at some point because he's the mafia boss and you think he's going to throw some life into this. But I mean, the dialogue was just so stupid. It, is Christopher Walken in it? No, no, Chris. Okay. Chris, I don't. Uh, it was uh, Al Pacino. I'm sorry. Uh, no, Chris Walken is. Because they're so oh. similar. Yeah, yeah, they are so similar. Um, I don't. It's been so long since I've seen it, and I try to pa- pass it out I of mean, my mind. How can but... a movie with Christopher Walken not be phenomenal? I just, I can't. Right? I can't believe that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm sure there's one or two movies Christopher Walken's been in that have been horrible. That may be true, like, but I, t- I, I, I disagree. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Anytime he's on scene, even the prophecy the is phenomenal. Was good. Yeah, that's yeah. the one who gets abducted by aliens and they like rape him. No, he, he's like a vampire or some shit. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, in my opinion, I know the budget for for Julie wasn't huge, but the fact that it only made seven million with with those two stars leading the way at that time in their careers, I just, I, I can't, I can't fathom it. Yeah, I can't believe it. So. Mm. Um, I don't know. Before we wind down, are, were there any that you guys, any other ones you guys had on your list that you wanted to to discuss, or are we all set? Uh, well, I, actually, uh, yeah. There's a recent one. Uh, I think I believe it bombed. That it got really bad critic score, but I liked it. Uh, we were just talking about Matthew McConaughey. Right. Uh, sorry, sorry, Matthew McConaughey. Right. Um, and then I uh, I lost my connection and dropped it out of the call. Mm-hmm, but uh, I was just about to bring up Beach Bum. Yep, I, I literally typed that into Google right before you said it. I was like, I guarantee he's going to bring up Beach Bum. Uh, <laughs> God, yeah. So box office on that was four point six million, and the budget was only five. I'm I'm surprised the budget was that oh, low for a McConaughey film. Oh okay. um, yeah. But that's still yeah. I mean that's still a big that's still a pretty big flop. I mean because yeah, then you double that for obviously for the marketing and stuff. So Isla yeah. Fisher. And Snoop Dogg and Zac Efron and apparently Jimmy Buffett was in it too. Jimmy Buffett. I mean, that's a decent yeah. cast right there. I'm surprised their budget was so low. Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence was in it. Apparently, I, I don't really? recall him hmm. at that. Huh. Okay. I, I've, I've seen it twice. Uh, both really, really fucked up. Which is the way to see it. Actually, I I, I have to say the like if you want to watch this movie, you got to be fucked up. I, I think we're gonna do is we're gonna Captain Whack, a dolphin tour guide. <laughs> was, oh my! I haven't seen Martin Lawrence in anything since like Blue Streak. That was a great movie. That was a great. That was a great movie. Actually, I wish he was in Leash. Bad Boys. Did you yeah, not see the latest Bad Boys? I didn't see the most recent Bad Boys. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. But Neil's actually Neil showed me Blue Streak in high school. Mm. I, I had really yeah. never heard of Martin Lawrence before before yeah. then, and then I started watching his movies. I but. wish they'd have made more Blue Streaks because they those uh, Martin Lawrence and whoever uh, the guy was was were a pretty good pair. Dave Chappelle was in that. Was that Dave Chappelle? Neil? Yes. No, no, the, it was. Okay. The other cop? No, no, no. The guy that his like the crook part. Oh yeah, but who who was his his fake cop was it partner? Steve Zahn. Or? I don't know, but they, they were they were a good pair. Yeah, yeah. I actually, honestly, I, I miss Steve Zahn. It's uh, Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Okay. okay. Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah, he's. Still, yeah. yeah, he is still alive. Very <laughs> good. 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 I didn't know we were talking about <laughs> deceased actors, but uh, <laughs> I think we need to do. We should maybe do an entire episode on best movies to watch while you're fucked up. That would be a podcast oh, to yeah. do. It, it now, would. are we going to do the podcast while we're fucked up? Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. Every movie we talk about, take a drink. I mean, for yeah, exactly. You guys can all get completely shit-faced. I'll just have to drink, I'm I guess, a lot of caffeine. I'm slowly buzzing myself at the moment. And, and I'll have to, like, drink a lot of caffeine, I guess. Or okay, that would be a great dynamic. I'll drink some kava, smoke yeah. a lot of cigarettes. I don't yeah. know. What, I don't know. I'll smoke a cigar or something. Yeah. Hookah makes me lightheaded. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll get a little hookah machine Drink in here. Drink a lot of water, get really hydrated. Yeah, have to go pee-pee. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> <No. go. laughs> on, on that subject, <laughs> if you listen to a couple of episodes of maybe So Bad They're Good podcast, there are a couple of episodes where I was really fucked up and passed out uh, <laughs> like during the recording, and I started like snoring apparently. This, Perfect. This sounds yeah. like an episode of I'm, Intervention. I'm so happy you're, 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 our, you're our favorite guest speaker and that we always have you on. This is this won't affect my decision to ask you back at all. At all. At all. Yeah. Make sure right. to come in really, really, really high or drunk next time. You you, yeah, no, if you want, like, let me know ahead of time and I can just be, like, totally fucked up. 
That, that that's 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 okay. I'll I'll let yeah. you know. If, yeah, if I, we I, I think to this whole thing has been a joke, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I've never, I've definitely learned from that experience. Uh, uh, <laughs> so let's. So uh, we, we we unfortunately have to wrap up for today. Um, Ian, thanks for being with us. Before we go, um, do you yeah, have yeah. a movie recommendation in kind of the flop or cult status uh, category that you would like to recommend to our listeners this week? Well, yeah, always. Yeah, uh, thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, there's one that just came to my mind. Uh, I, probably a flop, definitely a cult status. It's called Lady Terminator. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I you just watched know it. About I watched it for the first time like two weeks ago. Uh, you guys had a watch party, and I missed it, so I went ahead and just went oh, okay. on YouTube and rented it. Yeah, it was it was uh, so, you, so you already watched it. I did. Yeah, it was great. Awesome. Yeah, isn't yeah. it isn't it what, like so great? I love it. It's, so it's definitely one of my favorite cults. It's, so bad is good. It's mm. so dumb. Mm. Yeah. It's so great though. It, it's oh, it's so much shit. <laughs> for, for those uh, listening that don't know, this is um, it's called Lady Terminator. It came out in 1989, uh, one year or one or two years before uh, Terminator Two. Mm. So it is both a shot-for-shot shot remake of the first Terminator movie, but also the storyline has absolutely nothing to do with Terminator <laughs> at of, all. Of course it doesn't. Uh, of course it doesn't. <laughs> oh, it, it's about the, the South Sea Queen that uh, all she does is just fuck guys, but she has an eel inside of her vagina that bites dudes' dicks off. And so she... It starts out with she's just fucking dudes, bites their dicks off, and then he complains about how no man can satisfy her. Well, I think you've given me nightmares for quite some time. Thank it's you, perfect. Ian. Uh, yeah, so, and then it just turns into Terminator somehow. Yeah, uh, so I, I guess I, I'm going to, since you know, we've only got Ian as the guest this week, we usually have you know two or three people, so I, I'm going to open up to the panel okay. uh, of hosts here. Uh, do you guys have anything you'd like to throw in? For recommendations this week that we that we didn't talk about yet for viewers at all uh, yeah. so my recommendation this week it's a cult classic which is technically a flop it uh, had a budget of 15 million dollars i think it only recouped uh, a little over 14 oh. but it, to me it is a great 80s movie and that's going to be 1985 clue that was a flop oh, oh my yes, gosh that's that was one of my flop, favorite though. movies uh, it's really? definitely a cult classic with Tim Curry. Tim Curry also being known for his cult classic, uh, doing the time warp. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> if you haven't seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, you're we, a douchebag. We, we just can't remember any any movie titles today. I guess why are we hosting a movie podcast? <laughs> We're tired. We played golf for like six hours today in the blazing hot sun. We've been up since seven a.m. <laughs> Shut up, Gary. <laughs> But anyway, that is my recommendation for the week. That's a that's a great recommendation, uh, Gary. Anything? Uh, yeah, I'm going to recommend the movie I spoke about earlier, Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within. Okay. Um, if you uh, like sort of sci-fi movies um, and go into that with the mind that hey, this is a interesting sci-fi movie and not a Final Fantasy movie, I think you'll be very pleased with that. Um, mm -hmm. And the uh, it looked really good for uh, the time that it came out. The CGI, I think, still holds up uh, almost 20 years later. Yeah. Okay. Good one. Um, I, I'm going to go this week with Donnie Darko. I had mentioned it earlier. Um, kind of that one that, you know, catapulted Jake Gyllenhaal's career to where he's currently at. Uh, I It actually, it didn't really lose a lot. It had a budget of about $4.5 million, obviously not counting the marketing, but it didn't market itself a ton. There weren't a lot of previews out. It, it didn't, it, it showed... It showed worldwide, but it was in select theaters. Mm -hmm. It was only in a lot of major cities. Uh, so it grossed worldwide about seven and a half million, but really got that cult status once it went on to DVD uh, and it was being reviewed by uh, um, a lot of uh, internet, uh, excuse me, a lot of internet critics at the time. So yeah, uh, that yeah. was a very word of mouth movie. It I was, recall. yeah. I, I actually I had seen it for the first time in like two thousand six, and it was just through a friend. He was just like, "Oh, it's trippy as hell. Let's watch it stoned." And then I've, I've also watched it, I watched it sober multiple times, and it's still, it, it makes the hair around the back of my neck stand a little Is bit. Is that though. the one with the bunny? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. I'm yeah. not going to go into, I don't want to, I don't want to, this one I won't spoil, because I'm yeah. recommending it, so I, I won't spoil too much on it. Um, but it's good. It'll definitely, uh, it's 
definitely a, a bit of a mind fuck for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely will turn it. Um, anyway, so Ian, thanks for being on. Uh, uh, Ian Webb, once again, uh, host of the podcast, hey, Movies So you. Bad They're Good, and the Facebook group, <laughs> Movies uh, So Bad They're Good, Midnight Cult Classics and Camp. Uh, thanks again you for being with right. us. Here, man. There you go. I've been practicing in the shower every single day just just to be ready for when you return. Uh, <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. And thanks for uh, coming on uh, on that podcast last night. Oh, or, yeah, man. Thanks well, for having me. By the I time lo- this, yeah. I love talking about this episode shitty films. Airs, though, yeah, it, it'll be like two months ago or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but, this episode yeah. is like a very, it's like the last in our queue. We still have like seven or eight episodes to put up. Um, but yeah, man, for sure. I definitely want to do it again. We'll probably have an episode yeah, absolutely. Some, at some point where we talk about just horrible movies and an episode obviously dedicated to the room, just the room solely by right. itself. Yeah. Um, because but, that uh, movie cannot be analyzed enough. It's brilliant. <laughs> it really, really it is. It literally cannot. No, no, there, there's no way. And read the book. If you haven't, that's another recommendation of mine. If you haven't read The Disaster Artist by Greg Sestero, one of the stars of The Room, go and read it because it's the funniest piece of literature you've Absolutely. ever read. It, yeah, yeah, it's a very good I've book. I've read it twice. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, anyway, so for Neil, Gary, and myself, and all of us here at I Don't Give a Flick, stay classy. Stay classy.